The learnings I would pull out to start this session are five. First of all, it is essential to take a systemic approach, not only to use the words, but to translate the words into practice. And the words in practice mean not running straight to solutions, but taking time to understand what is at stake, understand the challenge of transforming a whole city, of transforming whole agricultural regions in systemic terms, what is what is a cause and effect of one thing and another thing? What are the obstacles? What are the resources, the assets, the cultural identities that are involved? And to design an implementation approach that understands no individual action will be sufficient. We need a connected uh, multiplicity of actions, multiple connected interventions, trying different solutions for every single different challenge, testing them together and implementing them together. So this does not mean a sequential selection of winning projects gradually implemented. It means choosing and making a portfolio in which many things are implemented simultaneously and many things are tested simultaneously with different solutions to look for the possible connections and relationships between them. The next most important point is collaboration. This kind of work that crosses boundaries, it crosses industry sectors, it crosses different solution spaces, it crosses zones of the city, it crosses uh, competitive relationships in agricultural zones or in industrial value chains requires radical collaboration. And this means we need incentives for participatory governance, for shared ownership, for a sense of participation in a commons, uh, whether the commons is a public commitment to 2030, uh, to 2030 goals, to energy, national climate and energy plans, but it also needs the structures of participatory governance and shared ownership and the incentives for collaboration across boundaries. This again can be structured at the level of the portfolio and the implementation governance. The third point is to close the loop. To close the loop between innovation research and innovation actions to create jobs, to support well-being, to try different technologies, to introduce new economic models and connect those actions to decision-making. This is absolutely essential. We have too often invested our innovation efforts in generating solutions, but not in really connecting them to policy-making and decision-making in the form of options that can support uh, commitment of capital commitment of procurement change, procurement law change, commitment of planning and policy with lines of sight that are coherent with government decision-making frames. It's a very important part of the design of the implementation. The fourth point is that COVID recovery and resilience funding gives us an opportunity to build the thing we most need, which is a capability. A capability and a capacity to adapt and to innovate in the face of constant shocks, of constant stress, which we will have. And here, I think it is essential to understand, for example, in Madrid, you will hear the learning around the importance of investing in systematic knowledge sharing, systematic training and capability building for a common, to, to work with a common framework, with a common language, to build a common vision, and to allow for Slack, uh, something that is about the creation of a budget of possibilities. We cannot afford to build transformation like we build a kitchen where every single joint is tightly connected. We need to build it like we're building a ship. You pull the joints to pull the beams together gradually with, with looseness and with play so that there is space to learn. And we have the capability to learn and learn fast. And the fifth point, the final point, we cannot do this if we are only applying our rational minds, our engineering minds. This is about acts of imagination. It's the reason why I so support and endorse the vision of this roundtable in Utopias. We need the imaginatory possibilities and the power of imagination to help us go beyond the limits that we continue to impose on ourselves, to help us imagine that it is possible to see possibility and because of the, um, because of a sense of something of being part of something that is bigger than ourselves, of working to make something that feels impossible now possible. 
And that is very much what we are talking about when we are talking about a 1.5 degree aligned world. Where we are now, it's close to impossible. We're going to do have to do something extraordinary to achieve it. Do you see what